Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Robin Raquel, and I just thank you for joining me. This is our second episode for the podcast. Are you ready to mingle, a.k.a. are you husband ready? And in case you don't know, I teach singles on how to date successfully so that they can become husband ready using my mingle method. Um, in my online master class um, so that you can uh, find your your soulmate and today I have a special guest with me my first guest on the show um, this gentleman here I found him on Facebook and he had um, a beautiful post about some topics that I think that are definitely relative to everything that is a part of my purpose and my mission in this podcast so i really really felt um a strong need to have him on um on featured on here because uh he has more in-depth knowledge about the topic and um who else better to uh to say it or introduce the topic than uh, someone who uh, specializes in it um his name is michael we call you Michael, or what am I going to call you? <laughs> I never asked you that. Yeah, yeah, that's Michael's fine. That's, that's okay. <laughs> Michael, and um, <laughs> I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what Michael does. He uh, is in ministry and um, singles and marriage ministry, but he specializes in talking about um, purity and intimacy or sexual purity, shall I say, um, in relationships. Uh, and he also teaches Sunday school. Welcome, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm fine. Good, 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 good. So just tell the people, the listeners of the podcast, one, introduce yourself properly, the name that you want us to know you by or find you by on social media, and um, just a little bit about who you are and exactly what you do. Okay. My name is Ogumbode Michael Adewali. And um, I'm on Facebook and uh, other social media. And also, I'm a Puritan. I talk about sexual purity. And I'm also a graphic designer. But basically, I'm a Puritan. I'm a counselor. I'm a graphic designer. And I'm a teacher. Thank you. Okay. And um, what's your background? How did you get into this particular ministry? I mean, like, what introduced you to it, or where did your thoughts start developing about this topic? Okay, okay. Well, I started this topic um, last year, that means last year, October. I started writing about sexual purity last year, October. And um, it was an encounter that I had about this from the Lord. So when I had the others encounter from the Lord about people being in bondage through sexual, through sex and um, other sexual things and sexual bondage in, in particular, then I'm instructed to teach continuously about it. So I started this ministry. I've been writing before. I started writing exactly 2012. I, I started with discipleship, talk about church and the motivational teaching and all that. But well, sexual purity started exactly last year, October. So that's when I started about teaching sexual purity, sexual purity, sexual purity. So it was an encounter that led into the teachings just to set people free sexually and make sure that they are sexually pure, both in marriage and in relationship or in courtship. So that's why I talk about sexual purity. Thank you. Yeah, that's so important when you say uh, particularly marriage because we always forget about marriage. A lot of people believe that whatever you do in marriage is fine and it's actually not true. Um, the Lord is very particular oh, no. about you know, uh, using and having a clean vessel. And that's what he looks to use. And yes. We have to be mindful of the activities that we involve ourselves in. Yes, 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 that's true. It involves both married. If you are married, you must be sexually pure. You cannot be a sinner and marry and expect to make heaven. It's not possible. So everybody is expected to be sexually pure. It's, 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 it's a personal decision. 
So even even if, if you are even if you are a fornicator before you enter, there is also adultery in marriage. So all those must be lined together. Thank you. Yeah, very true. Well, I appreciate you saying that and definitely sharing some insight on it because uh, you know at, at least you have the background and and you can explain it particularly for, for those that have questions, people leave questions or they want to find you on Facebook or look you up, you know, you have a lot of information posted about those topics. And so, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of things, but it doesn't mean I can explain it or teach yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? So. So. Tell, okay. No problem. <laughs> tell me, you know, I mean, you may not want to share, um, full details, but like, what is your story? What's your, your story with your parents and, you know, the type of home you were raised in or did, were you raised in church or were you not raised in church? Wow. I, I'm, I'm raised by a family that is loved. I mean, a family of um, five, we are five all together. And um, so in this family, uh, there's a family of love that we are so united. We have been trained from home. I'm not raised in church, I'm not raised in church. My dad is not a pastor. My mom is not a pastor. Okay. My mom is a worker in church. She's, a, she's, a, she's in the choir. She's in the choir. My, my dad is just a church member. So it's just recently that she, he became an elder. And my mom is an evangelist. But just now, let me let's say there is just a reason. So I'm not raised in church. I'm raised into business. I'm a businessman. So okay. <laughs> my dad too is, is a teacher. My mom is a businesswoman. So I'm raised into business and um, we live together in love. So I went to school and um, when I go to school, I, I be, become a fellowship um, teacher, Sunday school teachers in fellowship. Then I am an school in fellowship and so on and so forth till now. So that's all about my burger okay okay well i mean i told you before i was reading your materials online and you have some really great details just discussing all the reasons why we should be um pure when it comes to our sexuality and, yeah. you know just uh making sure that um we're educated and and we're being responsible you know in different ways and so um when i was reading it it was a very interesting story you talked about a young lady who i guess you counseled and uh she had went through some things but she couldn't understand why uh so many uh, people of the opposite sex were attracted to her and i thought that was so interesting because that's a topic that god has definitely placed in my heart especially for teaching when it comes to the spiritual oh, okay 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 yeah, about the lady, when, when she came to me, the first thing was that she was having a challenge with many men disturbing her for marriage. You know, many men are coming from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. We love you, I love you. And she was, she was confused and uh, she didn't know what to do. Then she was asking me, that was the problem. Then I was disturbing me day by day. What's it? I said, you will be fine. It's normal. You are, you are, you are okay. Nothing happens to you. When she left, after some weeks, she came back again. She said, now I'm having another problem. Married man, and I'm not running after me. They will follow me to my door. They want to give me free ride. I said, wow, that's great. Then she asked the question. She said, am I beautiful? I look at her, mm, is that true? Is it because is it, is it I'm beautiful? I said, it's not because you're beautiful. There is more than the beauty. That's why Proverbs 6.24 is saying, an adulteress owns for a precious soul. Now, there is something that is precious in our life. We look beyond the beauty. There's a content that a man carries that somebody just wants to pluck and exploit. There's something precious about our life. That's why when God made us, he made us in his own image and placed his logo upon us. And he said, because you are beautiful. If everybody is fearful and holy and wonderfully made, but behind every vessel, there is a glory. So what men are hunting for after you, as I was telling that, was not just because they love you. It's because there is something precious about your life that they want to get from you. There is something they want to exploit from you. That's why 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7 was saying something. He said, but we have those treasures in 18 vessels. We have those treasures in eating Jesus. That means there's a treasure that God keeps in the life of men. Not just because you are beautiful. 
So we have this treasure in earthen vessel. The body is the vessel. The body is the earthen container that has out the glory of the Lord. There's a treasure that God keeps in the body. We know that nobody, no, nobody can function without the body. Only the spirit works in their own veins. So they are seen beyond the body. They are seen into your spirit and your soul and the spiritual contents you carry. To exploit it, not to add to it. So men will keep running after a lady. It's not because you are beautiful. There is more than the beauty. There is a glory that you carry. The Bible says it's not because of our beauty. They look unto him and they were radiant and their faces are not ashamed. Now, it's not on what you make up. It's not on the size of the body. The body is a container. It's not what you carry. No, no, it's more than that. Beyond the mirror, beyond the door, behind the door, there is a glory that everybody is looking into and to get from you. So that's why after some while, when some people have been exploited of their glory, they become empty. We have some people who are beautiful today. We can see them that she's beautiful. But yeah. they're empty. Nobody's looking for them at the age of 30 again, 32 again. And they're saying, oh, while well, I was 20, people are running after me. But because they wasted their time, they had sex. They said, I'm still beautiful. But now she's growing old. She's still beautiful. But now the glory has left. The content has left. She has become a normal man, like normal human being. That's why the Bible says, I have said unto you that you are God. And you are the son of the most high. But you will die like mere men. What makes men to die like mere men is because there is a glory that has left them. But they, when God's glory lives the life of a man, true sexual sin, there are many other sins, but because we are talking about sexual sins, true sexual sins, a man loses glory. Yeah, he will die like mere men. Alex, so it's not, it goes beyond the beauty. There's a content inside your container. There is something inside the body. There is something beyond the structures that we see that you have not seen. What the eyes have not seen, not the ears have heard. As neither has it entered into the heart of men. So it's in the heart of God, but it's in your future already. But it can be exploited if not carefully checked. Okay. And the devil is so the, the devil is so, is, is so perfect that he has seen the future. And what he wanted to do is just that he wanted to say to you in a way that you'll not be able to marry right. When you marry wrong, he has said to you financially. He has said to you, he, would don't, he don't need to come to your house because he has successfully become your in-law. Because he has given you one of his children. So you just marry the devil's son. So he's your father-in-law. Either you're a Christian or you are a believer since that is just his aim. Let me just catch him. Let me give him one of my own son. Let them disguise. Let them come to you. Let them come as do as see. They are seeing your beauty, but there is a glory. So they, are, they, they can try to fracture that destiny, and the person may not get home again. So we know. So that's just about it. It's not, it's not about you alone running after you. Beyond your body, there is a spirit. There is a glory. There is a God. You are a container. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's deep right there. That's so true, though, because, um, you know, particularly for, for women, we love attention sometimes, <laughs> particularly. I mean, I think yeah, that's true. Like attention. I don't think that, you know, we're unique in that we like attention, but we really do enjoy attention like that's a thing for women. So when you're getting attention from um, a guy that either you admire you like, or whatever the case may be or multiple people, sometimes it makes you feel good. You might not even go on a date or you might not consider that person, but it really makes, it might boost yeah. your self-esteem. Yeah, that's true, that's true. But if you understood, that's if true. you understood more that, um, that the attention is bringing negative energy with it or it's bringing, you know, a demonic yeah. influence with it, it's like, whoa, like, do I really want this attention? I don't think I want this attention. <laughs> so it, it, it doesn't matter really but it depends on people that your life attract when your life is not progressing spiritually with all the attention so what's the gain because there are some people that you can connect with and they will destroy the journey you don't we, we don't need everybody we don't need anybody yeah. or everybody you only need people that are going your directions that's true we only need people going our directions it's not about the attentions all over the world no no there must be specific attentions you must gain to get to the glorious land. Or else you get many, many people are not fitting to your agenda. If, if everyone is fitting into your plan, you, you have no future. That's just it. So 
you must scrutinize your life and put yourself on the lane. And anybody that's going go your directions, say bye bye. Yeah. You move on. Yeah, it's thank hard you. though, you know, you're saying that so easily, but that's because one, you have discipline, you have spiritual discipline, <laughs> you have physical discipline. And if you're a man doing this, <laughs> then you really got some discipline. But on top of that, you know, <laughs> in the world, you're taught that attention is a good thing. So you're looking to embrace yeah. it. You're not looking to say no to attention, but we have to remember that the world that we live in, the this is the kingdom of darkness. It's upside down to God's system. It's not. It's backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, that's God's true. Going forward, it's going backwards. That's if true. God is right side up, it's upside down. And when we um, yeah, that's true. come to the Lord, we have to like detox ourselves from all of this stuff that we have put yeah. inside of our heads and our hearts for years. So letting go isn't. That's so it. Yeah, that's true. And particularly when your pride is wrapped up into, and your ego is wrapped up into getting attention. It can be challenging. Yeah, that's true, that's true, it's yeah. It's, it, it, yeah, yeah. We're we having that, that, that problem right now, that, that now even, it's, it's all over the world. But just that we need to be disciplined since you know what you are going to. Discipline can be painful, but it's not regretful. Yeah. Discipline can be painful, but it's not regretful. You, you can think it's painful. People are not coming to me. They're not giving me attention. But it's, it's, you, you have healthy life. Many people have just thousands of friends and their life is not progressing. But if you stay on your lane, you have few men, few men that can help you. They can, they can show you the path. Then you will know that one with God is a majority. It's not the number of crowds that comes around. number of few people that are spiritually inclined and spiritually focused. Okay. So many men have lose God today and begin to get along with anybody. And you see, they can't go far. You cannot just go far. It's not only two heads are better than one. Two good heads. Two good heads are better than one. So yeah. it's not about anything. You just can just stick around. So, but having focus and um, discipline and set standards. Set standards. Only few men that can fit that standard will work with you. That's it. Yeah, that's the underlying premise of my, my class that I teach online. The underlying premise is basically you need to set boundaries in your life because that's what's lacking is that you don't have the proper boundaries. And so therefore you invite this person, that person, oh. or you don't invite anybody because you got everybody blocked out because your boundaries are too tight. And so you have, you, you're missing balance. That's the essence of what I teach, but I dress it up and make it look yeah, that's pretty. True. Because women like stuff to be pretty when it's presented to them. So it's got to be wrapped in a package with a bow. And the same thing for the men. You have to <laughs> present it in a way that it might not be exactly what he's looking for, but it's a wrapped it's around fun. something he wants. Like I have this particular part of the session. It's called, um, it's called a virtual date where I send people on a blind date virtually with another person of the opposite oh. sex. And um, they basically just could, the opposite, well, the, you know, male, female. Mm. And, and then what happens is they go out on this date and they begin to talk and they introduce themselves to each other. And you begin to uncover things about yourself once because it's virtual. I'm taking out all of the all of the distractions because it's online. It's just like this in a Zoom meeting. Mm. But I'm helping you oh. identify what are your issues? What are the problems? What are you saying wrong? What are you doing wrong? Because apparently you don't want to be single, but you're here. So we got to figure out what's going on there. And so the essence of it is yeah. setting boundaries with balance. That's really what I'm teaching. Yeah. That's, 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 that's great. That's great. A life without boundary will go beyond boundaries. Yeah. And the, the funniest thing about, about boundaries, even God said boundaries. God himself made boundaries. <laughs> he you know, God was saying. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> God's got boundaries. You, <laughs> conditions. He's got Yes. You, you can't enter the kingdom of God anyhow. There are boundaries. There are I things know. you must do. There are things you must do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people are stuck on that scripture that says, come as you are. And I have to say, listen, God says, come as you are, but you're not going to stay as you are. You're not staying there. And that's no, no, no. the problem. You, 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 you come 
you're going to actually be transitioned into something else. He's trying to transform you. So you're not staying yeah. as you are. You're just yes. coming as you are. Yeah. What God is saying is just that. It's just that. He said, dear me, if you come as you are, if I will not transform you, that means you are going to believe. You know, Jesus was saying to the, to, to, the, to the disciples, he said, he said, dear me, and I will make you. He didn't say you will make me. I am sure I will make you if you dare follow me. Peter said, I'm going to follow you. And he said, don't worry, follow me and I will make you. So in the making, see, we are, we are not, God is a God himself. When we come as we are, he has the ability to transform the heart of men. You can't change the heart of God, but God can change the heart of men. So he's calling us as a divinity that he has the power to transform men and change the life of men. So come as you are, you will never remain the same. That's what God is saying. Yeah. <laughs> that is just coming as you are. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I thought that story was really well, like I said, it, it definitely hit home the story with the, with the young woman and some of the things that God is pressing on my spirit. But I do have to ask you, another thing okay. you mentioned in your writing, you talked about um, how intimacy affects your character. And um, you mentioned also things like charisma. I mean, you mentioned quite a few things and temperament. Talk a little bit about that for me. Yeah. Okay, now the first thing about that is this, intimacy affects your character. Now, number one about that is just that anyone that, that, that begins to have intimacy, let me just start from the youth. Now, somebody that is committing fornications, yeah, out of the knowledge of the parents. Now, the, the, the person begins to misbehave in some aspect, like how he believes that he has, he or she, has been doing what the parents have done. You already have the mindset that what my parents are doing, I'm already doing it. They have the sex to give back to me. I'm already having it right now. So any time from now, I can leave the house. Then because he's trying to hide it from them, somebody of good behavior, of good character, he will start lying. He asks you, where are you going to? Okay, I just want to go and buy something. And it's, it's, it's not true. He's going to a boyfriend's house or a girlfriend's house. That's the, that's the first place. That's the first place of lying. Now, they begin to become proud to their parents at times. That's why you see some people, when their parents talk to them, say, no, no, mommy, I'm not going that way. I'm going with him. Going with you. You want to dishonor your parents because of a spouse. And the Bible says, honor your parents that your days might be long on earth. It's not only that your days will be long on earth. If you want to be long in marriage, you want to stay long in marriage, you must honor your parents. But anyone that commits sexual sins, the first thing that comes to their heart is the pride that I am already doing what my mother is doing. And this pride brings a lustful desire. It bring, makes them to be, start, start lying. Someone that doesn't lie before start lying to his parents. You see, he has a good character before. He is a man that is pure in heart before. Now he's looking for something to cover up. And one thing, when you lie once, you begin to lie again. You must back up the lie. It's only truth. When you say the truth, the truth is still remains the truth. But when you lie once, you need to look for backup lies to keep backing up your lies to keep yourself secure. Now, about, about that, that's, that's about the character. Your character begins to change. Your attitude begins to change. You begin to hide something. You are, you are free before you, you show your parents everything before, but now you are hiding something from them. You are, do not want them to know. It's in marriage, you begin to hide something from your spouse. Your, your husband is, your wife is coming, you are trying to hide your phone. That, that's what we have in the world today. This is a man that is free before. He, he has a good character. But now you are trying to hide your phone from your spouse. You want to hide your call from your spouse. You are trying to give password to your phone and see the change in character. The same thing happened to Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden. There's a place of meeting. Adam meets with the Lord. But that day God came and he didn't meet Adam in the place of meeting. Adam is hiding because something has changed in his character. Something has changed in his attitude. There's already a sin. Until God was saying, where are you? I've been sitting for you all this. Come, let us talk. He said, no, I cannot show unto you. He said, this is not your attitude. I know you come to me normally. You run unto me when you know I'm in the garden. This is not your attitude. He said, no, there's a barrier between, between us because I've done something wrong. That's about the character. Then about the temperament. One thing about temperament is just that we have spirit control temperament. Everybody has a temperament. You no, know, we have the sanguine and other type temperaments. So 
all those temperaments are to be controlled by the Spirit. That's the Spirit of the Lord. That's why the Bible was saying that He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. It's not everybody that has courage. But anyone that walks in line with the Lord, you will have the courage to stand even in a time of trouble. But when your temperament is being affected by another spirit dominating your body, uh, what transferred the spirit is because of sin. When sin enters a man's life, the spirit of the Lord will leave until you ask for forgiveness. Then your, your temperament is being affected. Your life is being changed. You become angry anyhow. Your, your hunger may not be controlled again. We could remember in, in, in the book of Acts of Apostles, remember that there, there is a man called Paul. He was a coward before, but we know when the Spirit of the Lord came at Pentecost, this man became bold. That's, that's, that's a temperament. He was no more shy again. He, he could go around, he could talk to anybody. But before, he was holding to himself. He was running away. He was afraid of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was walking from far, looking at Jesus. Now, but when the Holy Spirit came, it affects his temperament. He not only carries charisma, not only character, but charis- not only charisma, but character and the temperament has changed due to the Spirit. So your temperament can be altered because of what you carried. That's why the Bible was saying, let your world be seasoned with salt and grace, that you may know how to answer all men. Yes. When you have a bad temperament, you will, you, you will answer anybody anyhow. You will talk to anybody anyhow. But when the Spirit of the Lord is at work in your temperament, no matter how much, you are controlled by the Spirit. You submit. When a man starts to walk in sin, then the temperament is altered because it's controlled by another spirit. That's what Romans 8 verse 4 was saying about because it's already dominated by another spirit. And we know that what really happened to that spirit is the manifestation of the work of, the gal- of, of, of darkness. That's what Galatians 5 was saying in seeing that the manifestation of the, of the work of the flesh. The work of the flesh begins to manifest in your character, begin to manifest in your temperament. You can misbehave anyhow, you can even to forgive at times. You know, to, we say to, to forgive is divine. But any man that is connected with divinity, we be, find it easy to forgive. But when a man enters into sin, your life is being transformed negatively. And your temperament and character will be affected because you are no more controlled of the Lord. You are controlled of the devil. The, the, the last example I would like to make is the example of Saul. The Bible says in the book of um, 1 Samuel 15, was saying, when the spirit of the, of the Lord left him, the Bible said, and an evil spirit from the Lord was disturbing him. When this man was disturbed by the evil spirit of the Lord, to control his hunger and temperament, they need to look for his, a, a psalmist. That was David that could play for him. And the Bible says, when David come and play the strings, the Bible said the evil spirit would depart from him and he will have peace. Can you see that many people don't have peace today because what dominates them is, 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 a, is an evil spirit. Many people misbehave today, what dominates them is an evil spirit. Because it's what works in your inside that will show on your outside. It's the content of your heart that transfer. That, that transfer. You, we speak out of the overflow that we have in our mind. The Bible says, out of the abundance of hearts, the mouth speaks. Yes. So when you are controlled by the Lord, you speak of the Lord. But when your temperament is affected by another spirit, you speak of that spirit. That is just it. So, so Saul was misbehaving according to the things that come upon him. This man was, when we read the history of Saul, in the beginning, he said, he's a just man. This man, he said, in all his... But when the spirit came upon him, he began to misbehave. So that's what about temperament. Your temperament can be affected when you run into sin. And you will walk out of the agenda of God and make errors because you are controlled by a spirit that is against the Lord. And we know that darkness and light can never be roommates. You cannot expect darkness to stay where light is. It can never be roommates. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, um, I mean, so many great points in there, Michael, that um, I mean, you hit it the nail on the head when you talked about, I mean, just you have so many good points in there. It's just important for people to understand that all of our actions, particularly in 
the bedroom or intimacy, they affect everything that you do. You know, um, sp uh, especially when it is involved in sin or when it's outside of the covenant of marriage, it really does affect you. And yeah. it will take you down. I mean, spiritually, you feel like you will, you know, you've dropped the level or you've some powers left you or something. You definitely notice it. And it's important for people to understand that there yeah. are consequences spiritually. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that was really good. Um, the only other question I have for you was what I what I told you before was like, what is your your overall reason as to why we must, you know, wait and be and be uh, sexually pure? What is the overall reason that drives your whole entire mission when it comes to this? Okay. Now, why we need to wait? Why we need to be sexually pure? It's just because it's not only about God alone. I, I teach scientifically and I teach, I teach scientifically and I teach um, spiritually. One of the reasons why sex must wait is because of your body. Many people today are um, entering the premarital sex and they carry the sickness till death to them part. Some people signed their death certificates because of sexual sins. We could remember a man called Solo, uh, Samson. He was the one who signed his death certificate. He said, Lord, I want to die with my enemy. And this is not the, this is not the, this is not the purpose of his life. This is not what God told or wrote about him. But because he entered into sexual sin, he signed the death certificate himself. So many people today, we, we know people today who are through abortions that lose their womb. Yes, God will forgive them. But it takes higher grace and God mercy for them to, to conceive again in life. So we, we, we could even see in the life of David, sleeping with a, with a rare wife, that Bathsheba. We know that his body paid for it. It was the Bible says, you will not build an house for me, number one. Number two, sword will not depart from your house. That's why God said he loves him. All his children are killing themselves one by one before him with a sword. And that was the word of the Lord because he demands sin, which was a sexual sin. So we see the hand of David, despite God forgiving. So number one thing is just that your body bears consequences. Many people have, emo many people have emotional traumas today. Many people run mad today. Many things happen. Some people committed suicide because of sex out of marriage. Yeah. Then into marriage is, is infidelity. You, you, you break the trust of your wife. You affect your children, broken homes, and nobody can trust you. Even you yourself, you'll not be happy. Nobody do this in outside marriage that becomes happy. Then the last thing is just that about everyone. We know, Bible says, adulterers, fornicators, all of them, liars, they will find their portion in the lake of fire. What will benefit you that God himself keep you so much. He has blessed you with his own heavenly glory. And at last, you squander them on, 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 on pleasures. God is saying, he had a purpose for our lives. He said, right from the Father's wound, I have known you and I have called. Will you now try to, because of pleasure, forget or neglect purpose? Many people will waste the purpose of God for their life because of sexual pleasures. He doesn't want it. The Lord is waiting for us to meet him in glory. He has replaced me. He said, I'm going to be a place for you. There is no place that I will compare to heaven. Then how much more pleasures of 40 minutes now make people lose that eternity? So it doesn't work it. The main purpose of sexual purity is that you see God in glory. That at last, when rapture son, rapture is in son, meets you on another wife, another wife, um, another wife. Rapture did not stand, meet you in the, in the prostitute house. Because nobody knows. He said, it's coming like a thief at night. So what profit will a man gain when you gain this whole world and you lose your soul? What can you get in a replacement for it? Yeah. And we should know our body is a, is a container that carries a content going to a continent. We are a container, we carry a content, which is the content of the Lord. Number one of this is your glory. Number one is grace. Number one is number three is opportunity. Number, number five is, is mercy and many things in your body. And you are going to continent. The continent is heaven. 
Number three, I will say reasons why you must be sexually pure is because of sexually transmitted demons. Many people have been used for rituals today by sexually transmitted demons. Their life has no meaning, they, yet they are still living. You can condom spam, you can condom sexually transmitted infection, you cannot condom grace, you cannot condom glory, you cannot condom those things, you cannot condom power, you cannot condom sexually transmitted demons. It is easily transferred. What will not profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? Yes. The purpose of the devil is to make sure that you didn't get to heaven. Yeah, he's trying to make people to lose the track. Yes. But you that you are heavenly conscious, you must neglect purpose. And, and you must neglect pleasure and get purpose to see God in glory. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so awesome. I really appreciate all that information for sure because um, Thank you, so much. You, can, you can know some stuff, but it doesn't mean that you uh, know how to transfer that information to someone else. So <laughs> you did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for speaking with me this week because um, it really blessed me, particularly, you know, some of the things that we discussed um, via uh, the inbox or messenger really, really blessed me and, and helped me to get freedom in some areas of my life. So I've been definitely blessed through our connection and communication for sure. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for having me on the show too. No problem. No problem. Um, just hang out. You want to hang out with me for a couple of minutes while I wrap up the show? Yep. Pardon? Okay. So, um, basically what we do after we have a special guest is, um, just go over, you know, a few little things that are going on with the class. Um, this week with the master class, the ES mingle master class, we will be um, doing the second week of pre-launch, um, just looking to add more enrollees in the pre-launch and um, introduce the course to, um, to some new students out there. I also have a promo going on, it's seven dates in seven days. And I am looking to um, have a few more singles go on a mock date. So the virtual date night is a mock date. It's not a real date between two people, but it's just to help you to explore. And like I said before, uncover some of the common things that are keeping you sing single, some of the mistakes that you're making, um, just some of the things that you are doing, your habits and flaws that are pushing other people away. That's the main purpose of the mock date. So I'm looking to do that. The promo is running right now is seven dates in seven days. The dates will be recorded and they will be aired on YouTube and on all of our social media platforms. Um, our social media platforms, you can find me E as in Edward, S as in Sam, the word mingle. We have a Facebook page, um, also in Instagram. We're on there and YouTube, YouTube, you can find the video to this podcast. So all of the podcasts will be videoed on YouTube as they are released on um, the podcast platforms. So um, that's pretty much it for this week. The main thing was our special guest. Um, I had uh, like maybe one or two other things that I would love to do. I want to add a scripture in here, but I did not prepare anything for this week. So I would like to know, Michael, do you have a scripture that you would like to share in light of everything that we just talked about? The scriptures to share, right? Yeah, just one scripture, just one single scripture that you can share that wow. people can walk away the, from the podcast with. Okay, oh, yeah, there are many scriptures that I can share, really. <laughs> I know, that's why Roman, I can take it. Just, one. <laughs> just one scripture. Just one. <laughs> one scripture. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just share Second Corinthians 4, verse 7. Second Corinthians verse four verse seven. Okay. So that, that one is talking about the um, that, 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 that God please. So, so it's showing the, 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 the significance of the Lord so much honor men that he please the content into their container as an eighteen verses. That's um second Corinthians um four verse seven. Okay, so second Corinthians four and seven, that's awesome. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know it's so tough. Yeah. So many favorite scriptures that you're like one scripture. <laughs> So, but I thank you for sharing that because uh, I, I understand your challenge there. <laughs> so last but not least, I'm going to do what we call uh, one minute coaching. And in a one minute coaching, I'm just going to talk about one of the most important points that I find throughout the week with my teachings, my workshops, the online course, things that feedback I'm getting from, you know, um, my listeners or my enrollees into the course. Um, my one minute coaching for this week would definitely be to let anyone who is single that is looking to uh, enter into the covenant of marriage. Um, or some people are dating. Not everybody is saved. So some people are dating. Everybody has different beliefs. Sometimes they don't necessarily believe as I do. But the most important thing I could tell you to do is to be yourself. Don't pretend to be someone else. Don't try to be like your favorite character or personality on TV. Just be yourself. And you will find that people respond to who you are, your flaws, um, how you present yourself authentically, uh, more realistically than they do when you try to pretend or put a mask on or um, try to distract people with things that really don't represent who you are. When you're being yourself, you actually, you leave yourself from all of the the narratives that are in this world that we live in with materialism and things of that nature, you relieve yourself of all of those things. If you just be yourself, you'll find that people will be attracted to you for who you are, not necessarily people of the opposite sex, but just even in, when it comes to your circle and the people you surround yourself with, they can be attracted to you for who you are and not who you have uh, made up yourself to be. So that's my one minute coaching. That's mostly everything for this particular podcast episode with the, uh, are you husband ready? Are you ready to mingle? Uh, are you ready to find your soulmate podcast <laughs> that we have going on? And, um, I thank everybody out there that has been following my page. Um, th today quite a few people went and followed the page and really like in, um, just encouraged me because we got a lot of new followers and, um, a lot of people were telling me that they liked the idea of my topic and how interesting it was. So it shows that people out there definitely need help when it comes to their life, their personal life, their relationship life, um, and that they're looking for guidance. And uh -oh. direction. Were you going to say something, Michael? Uh, you talk about being yourself. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. <laughs> surprised how many yeah, people are yeah, not yeah. being yeah. themselves. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 can, you can live a fake life to, to be like somebody. If you are trying to make a photocopy of someone, it's, trying, it's like you are trying to convert a right car to a left hand side. And it's come with effort and it will never be the same. Yeah. So you cannot compare photocopy with original. God, God make every one of us specific and unique for his special assignment. Yes, sir. If you be like someone else, you will miss your purpose. You will miss your assignment. That's why our fingerprints are not the same. Our fingerprints are not the same. Our mind is not the same. Even when we have identical trees, their fingerprints can never be the same. You be yourself. Be what God asks you to do. Be what God wants you to be. That's why it's only God who knows the journey of man and the size and the length of his life. So he has everything for us. Everything summarized is inside you. Explore yourself. Don't look at another person and say, wow, I want to build my life like this. Mm -mm. Build your life the way God wants you to build your yes. So we have different characters in life. That's just it. So be yourself. Be better in all things you do. Don't run after anybody. Try to trace yourself, develop your own life, develop your attitude, develop your character, yes. develop your mental capacity. Don't stay in lane or else you will be retarded in growth. People you are looking up to, maybe God wants you to be more than them and you want to stay in their lane. I want to be like somebody and God wants you to be more than the person. So running to be like somebody can corrupt or cancel your purpose. Just be yourself. That's the best. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. That's definitely great inspiration because um, a lot of people struggle with that, man. And uh, I like to do like a one minute, yeah. one minute coaching from my class, basically just giving people tips. And you be, I'm just surprised. Sometimes I'm stunned at how many people, they just don't know how to be themselves. So 
I thank you for your word on that. Yeah, I'm that's go ahead true. and uh, wrap it up here. Any last minute thoughts, mm -hmm. Michael, before we head on out? Okay, any what? Any last minute thoughts? Oh, no, really. Okay. All right, well, once again, we thank you for joining us. I'm going to post this, and when I post it, I'm going to post all the information so that if you want to look Michael up or if you want to find out more information about his ministry or you just want to find out more information about the topic we discussed today, which is purity with intimacy or sexual purity, purity in your marriage, um, definitely look up his pages and you'll, you'll definitely find an abundance of information. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you. Bye.